There is a lot to be excited about in the indie releases coming out in January 2023. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to a fictional escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is the indie releases coming to you in January 2023. There are some big name books, some anticipated releases coming out this month. Let's jump into it. Actually, you know what, before we jump into the video, make sure you check in the description box down below for links to my social media and Discord should you want to come along for the ride. Okay, I'll stop teasing, let's actually jump into it. Up on January 1st, we have Shadows That Bind Us. This is by Amber L. Werner in his Palisade book number one. This is epic fantasy slash sword and sorcery with a touch of romance thrown in there. And this gorgeous green cover with the wolf how could you go wrong? A tagline that says, when magic comes at a terrible cost, who will pay the price? Sounds intriguing to me. Moving on on January 3rd, we have a couple of new releases coming out. We have The Dancing Tree, which is Relic Saga number one. This is by J.A. Skold. This is epic fantasy, grimdark slash sword and sorcery, again with a touch of romance. And this cover has blown me away. This is a beautiful, beautiful cover and it says look it wasn't supposed to go like this all right humans were trouble life as a monster hunter had beaten that lesson into sebastian often enough but just because people said relics were heartless monsters didn't actually make him one it would have saved him a whole heap of trouble if it did a cover like that blurb like that i'm pretty interested in the dancing tree then on January 3rd, we have Chasing Sunset. This is Tales of Adonna. It says, It's not easy being the child of legends. Bo is a rich girl with a staggering legacy and a dragon. She'd spent her time having fun, but lately she'd chosen to hide at home, nursing heartbreak. When her brother goes missing, the first hint of a larger plot against her family is known. B must find her inner hero if she and her friends can avoid getting killed first. We have another couple of books coming out on January 7th. The first one being Demon Siege. This is Pax Arcane and Otherwise book number four by Joanna Macy Juska. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry if I butchered it. And this is another epic fantasy slash sword and sorcery tale. Being a book four, I can't go too much into it, but it says the demons have arrived and the final battle for Kaigal is about to start. If you're into the pa Pax Arcane and Otherwise series, Book four coming your way. Then we have the Oromancer's Exorcism box set coming to you by Joshua E. B. Smith. This one is on my radar because for the four books, you can pick this up for about 12 AUD over on Kindle. This is epic fantasy, grimdark, sword and sorcery, and horror, all things that I love. So if you want all four books for a cheap price, this may be one to pick up. The blurb says, A cursed priest with a dead woman in his dreams. Rubblings of a demon thought vanquished on the waves. A sadistic vampire stalking the city streets. If Akaran can't overcome his demons, the safest city in the kingdom will succumb to bloody insanity. Sounds pretty cool for a series. I might be picking this one up. Then on January 10th, we have Embers Rising. This is The Fixers book number one by Sterling Carmichael and it is shelved under epic fantasy. I'll read a snippet of the blurb, not the whole thing. It says, they expected their heist to yield coin, not conspiracies. What the former mercenaries find is a deadly plot that could destroy their country. The nation of Aryan may have recently shed its monarch for a more democratic government, but reform hasn't changed the rules of survival on the streets. Currency is king, and almost everyone is for sale at the right price. That one also has my attention. Moving on from there, again on January 10th, we have A Crucible of Fire and Steel. This is Heirs of War, book two, by Jamie Edmondson, again shelled under epic fantasy. The futures of kingdoms, empires, and the peoples of two worlds hang in the balance in book two of the Heirs of War. Featuring new adult character journeys, bloody medieval battles, warring states, and dark sorcery. That are a few buzzwords for some people that I know and they may be looking to pick up this series. Then on January 10th, we have Trial of Thieves. This is Dawn of Assassins Book 2 by John Cronshaw. Fedor is a thief and a killer. 
Sorin changed everything. Nothing can go back to how things were. Armed with a magical blade, Fedor has no choice but to accept his first contract as an assassin. His target is the most dangerous man in Nordtrum. Is the money a high enough price to kill? Will he choose between the life of a thief and the life of an assassin? What will happen to the surviving members of his gang? Another one that sounds pretty cool. By the way, if there are like blurbs within the series that don't give anything away, I'm more likely to read them, whereas if they're like a book three, four, or five in a series, there's likely spoilers, so I'll skim over it. It depends on what the blurb has said as to if they're included in the video. On the 14th of January, we have got the Rhine's Portal to Nova book number three by J.R. Matthews, and this is epic fantasy, literary RPG, and historical fantasy, and this cover and this blurb has me interested in the series overall. As the dust settles on the battlefield of Carthage, Alexander finds himself struggling to cope with the aftermath of war. Plagued by demonic corruption and mental exhaustion, he searches for any means to restore his strength and secure a rapidly expanding empire. Definitely can see those historical fantasy elements coming into play there. Then on the 17th of January, and maybe my favourite cover of this this grouping of books is the Tattoo of Crimson. This is Blood of the Fae book one by Sarah Chilson and is a historical fantasy slash gas lamp and something that I'm interested in picking up myself. Society, suitors and serial murders. As much as she, as much as she desires to please her family, gently bred herbalist Oh, I'm a sucker for a herbalist as well. Jessa Caldwell has no intention of making a suitable match, not when she's seeing the truth brought about by the taint of the Fae that lies within her. If she's to escape the madness brought on by Fae Touch, she must devote her energies to seeking a cure. This book had quite a long blurb, and it is it does seem a little bit on the softer side to me personally, but this cover, it sounds like it's going to be delightful. I am new to gas lamp fantasy, and I'm intrigued. So I might be picking this one up, unsure, but I, I am in love with the red of this cover. Then on 17th of January, so again on 17th of January, we have some cozy fantasy, which seems very reminiscent of Legends and Lattes, and that is The Bookshop and the Barbarian by Morgan Stang. It says, The Bookshop and the Barbarian is a low-stakes, comedic, and cozy fantasy with a slice-of-life sapphic romance. It's about the celebration of books, autumn and winter, community, friendship, and unexpected love, and it is also very patiently waiting for you to pick it up and read it. Note, the Cozy Quill Bookshop is a goblin-free establishment. It sounds like it could be cute. Then on the 18th of January, we have the Briar Crowns is by Helen Rye Peterson and is the Zemkoska Chronicles book number one. They say love conquers all, but then the conquered ever love the conqueror. I have read this one. I was on the beta team for Helen Rye Peterson for The Briar Crown. This was a fantasy romance that warmed my heart and I actually had a pretty good time with it, which is high praise coming from me. And this cover is just something else. The more you look at it, the more you want to know about what's inside. I had a really good time with this one and I hope that if you are a fantasy romance reader, you'll give this one a go. On January 19th, we have The Moss Dragon of Brittle Keep by Ashley Capes. This is the first YA entry that we have in this list. It says, when Penny stumbles across a dragon's tooth beneath the city cemetery, she unwittingly becomes a target of the Brittle Keep's master and his dark magic. Urged to keep her own ability secret by the talking locket, Bear, her mysterious ally, Penny seeks help from a band of rebels who have their own reasons for accepting her. Doubt mounts swiftly as Penny is faced with flight into the unknown or capture by those who will stop at nothing to harness her power, all the while claiming to be the only one she can trust. Interesting. If you're into YO fantasy, that might be one to pick up. Also on January 19th, we have Colliding Forces by an author who has been on every one of these lists so far, and that is Niranjan. Okay. So undercover missions are one of Barry's favourite things. Getting in deep and completing a dangerous mission has always brought him a sense of pride until this latest task. Now, it's just personal. Given the job of going undercover to bring in a Mortimer is going to be difficult. The man, if he can be called that, is Barry's biological father, a disgusting fiend with a sketchy past. All family drama, urban fantasy feels, 
I'm here for it. When Barry starts to dig more into Mortimer, he learns a complicated truth. Mortimer is an alien with magic in his bloodline that is fatal to humans. Barry's clock is ticking and the only ones who can help are the aliens who consider him an enemy. Can he convince them to help before it is too late? This sounds cool. This sounds like a fun adventure. Uh, bit of leaving reality at the door. Having fun with it. We also have on January 19th, I feel like this one needs no introduction, book three of The Bound and the Broken by one Mr. Ryan Carhill, The Of War and Ruin. I am not even going into this blurb. This is a series that I'd like to get to. I don't think I'm going to get to it until 2024. I'm not going to read anything about it for selfish reasons. But like I said, needs no introduction. Of War and Ruin is coming out on January 19th. On January 24th, we have No Heart for a Thief. This is Malatu. Number one by James Lloyd Doolan. This is epic fantasy slash sword and sorcery. We are the stories we tell ourselves, even the lies. The thief, a great spirit, and her descendants have abused their ability to steal magic for centuries. When Kalo starts to hear the song of other people's magic, he must learn to hide from his people as well as the invaders. A gift or a curse, Kalo may be able to save his people from the Gaust Empire that claimed their land with this stolen magic. I've read this one as well. I had such a good time with it. It is a really fresh take on the past story trope. If you have a character that has gone through an event and is now sharing their past story, this is different in that we are looking at a past story, but we also have a present timeline and those timelines intertwine quite beautifully. There will be more, or you would have already seen my December wrap up. So if you want to I talk about it a little bit more then, this is one of the coolest magic systems that I've read in a while and I had a great time with it. So if you're into some epic fantasy with a bit of a twist, this is one that you're going to want to pick up. Then up on January 24th is a book that is on many an anticipated reads list, including my own. This is A Shade of Madness by Tiago Abdallah in the Ages of Avarin, book number two, which is epic fantasy. Book number one, A Touch of Light, still lives rent-free in my head, so I can't wait to continue on with the story about a year on from when I picked up the first book. Avarin tumbles into madness through the shattered ruin of a centuries-old peace. Madness is spreading and it cares not for the borders of men can't wait. Moving on from there, on January 28th, we have Indigestion and the Apocalypse. This is the Three Vases book number three by Chad Redarath, and I think we had book two earlier on one of these lists, if not last month, the month before. So it is not long after the, the release of book two that we are being blessed with the third installment. These covers are something else. Like, these covers, I don't normally pick up YA, but they sound cheeky. They're sort of historical fiction in a YA form, and... I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll pick this up at some point in my life. Also on January 28th is another big release. I know a lot of people are excited for this one and that is Aduel's Sin by Daniel T. Jackson. This is the Illborn Saga book number two and is the in the epic fantasy realm. Illborn got a lot of praise in 2022, uh, 2021 slash 2022, whenever it came out. It may not have worked for me, but I know a lot of people are really, really looking forward to this release. And it says, how does the opportunity ever arise for one person to alter destiny of a world? As the nations of Angal move closer to a holy war, the four Illborn are to face a momentous challenge. Challenges while seeking answers about who they are and what their growing powers mean. If you are looking forward to the next installment of the Illborn Saga, then this is your chance to pick that up on January 28th. And closing us out on January 31st is Cry Magic. This is Jack Fay, Demon Fighter, book number two by Mike Morris. This is an epic fantasy slash grimdark novella series, nice and short to fit into your TBR. I don't know a whole lot about this one, but as I read the blurb, it may have contained spoilers for book one, so I have left it. Those are your indie releases for January of 2023. A couple of big names in here. What are you looking forward to? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like the content, give it one of those. Hey, if you want to see more of it, click subscribe at your will, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.